if you go back again, who's inspiring you to do tapes, to, to DJ? Who's the beginning of all this to you? When I came in, I started DJing with Star Chow, right? And in the SNS Club. It, it, it didn't mean to happen like that. The SNS Club was a place that you wasn't just allowed to be in there. You had to be somebody. You had to be this certain kind of person, right? And I'm sitting there the first time I've ever been there. And a drug dealer walked up and said to somebody that drives Touch of Class, yo, I, 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 I bet $150, I bet $150 that kid will be Star Child. Walked up to me. I'm like, nah, man, I'm not here for that. I'm chilling. Like, nah. I'm you just you missed Star Child at this time? I didn't even meet Star Child. Well, you, knew, you knew of him? I knew of him. Okay. I'm, I'm listening to him playing. He's playing right there. Okay. But I'm sitting there just watching everything that's going on. Like, this is some shit. Were you spinning at that point here? I was playing music. Oh, okay. No, not yeah. at the spot. I was sitting here right, just right. Like, watching what's going on. It's my first time there. So I'm watching this. I'm looking what's going on. I'm like, damn, this is what they're talking about. Because I always heard about the S. I'm like, yo, this is what they're talking about. Look, seeing all these people and, you know, different street people, Alpo walking and this one walking. I'm looking, I'm like, damn, shit. The dude comes up and he shouted, you know, $100, out I was like, nah, nah, nah. You know, with drug dealers at the time, you know, you can't tell them no. They're going to they gonna yeah. make you yes you to death. Yeah, yo, right. Come on, kid. Yeah. And then Star Child said something slick on the mic. God bless his soul. He said something slick on the mic up there, and I ran up there and uh, did one move, blew the whole club up. He turned to me. He was like, yo, kid, I'm selling 20 out of tapes. We should do it together. We split the money, 10-10. I'm like, all right, fuck it. We end up doing it. So mm. we got six tape decks up in there. We copy the tapes. People buy the tapes right there. Next thing you know, the tapes is all over the place. So me and Star, we were so loved in that club. You couldn't breathe wrong at us. You couldn't look wrong at us. Or anybody that came in there, we were so protected by some of the most craziest dudes that we, you know, we wasn't on that, but right. they lived a certain way and they and they took us very serious. But we went through raids in there. We went through cops coming in, breaking up the toilets, throwing, they throwing guns, crack bottles, coke bottles all over the floor. And it was crazy, man. Um, we'll leave there, go up the block to the Zodiac, which is another club owned by the same person, getting there, joint be ran packed. Somebody coming in, robbed the gambling. Maybe it was, a, it was a crazy time. But I did that for a year and a half with Star. And you know what? I'm glad I did it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why my first record on my first album was called The Apollo. Mm. It's about uh, saluting Harlem and Uptown. And now my record Uptown was the same thing, to go back and salute the people that held me up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, mm. I may not agree with what they might have been doing at the time, but I wouldn't talk down on it because those right. are the ones that was buying the tapes. They're the ones that kept my name right. out there. So it was definitely yeah, yeah, like, a like how Like how... Um, <coughs> Strippers is the A and R's for um, like like um, strip club music. Drug dealers was the A and R for um, for for New York music for, for the street. Yeah, for the absolutely. Streets. Yeah, not, my yeah, music, not New York music. Yeah, my mixtapes was the soundtrack was a soundtrack to those type of people. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you, when they drove down Eighth Avenue, and they heard right. their name screaming out on the tape. It meant so much to them. You right. know what I'm saying? And then the certain type of the type of music that I was bringing out is the music that. People, like, well, it wasn't just me. It was me, it was Star Child, it was Boosie B. It was, you know, that type of music. I brought a lot to the game. Star Child brought a lot to the game. Boosie brought a lot to the game. But that type of music made the street people feel it. It was like a, it was just like a feeling they had that certain kind of music. Mm. It was their soundtrack. It was the soundtrack. That's right. why I named my album Soundtrack <clears throat> to the Streets, my second album. Mm. Um, when I did that, because I, I gave them the soundtrack for so long right. with the mixtapes. Right. <clears throat> and when I put this album together, it was like I was kind of almost doing it that way, but in a in a different way. I wasn't trying to be like a DJ on the, on the album. I was a producer. I was looking more like I was trying to be a Quincy Jones. And at the time, Quincy Jones had called me to come in to do his album. I had did, crazy, uh, dude. You just said that like it ain't shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was Chris trying to Jones just call me. Well, Chrissy Jones. He, he was just Jones calling everybody. Call <laughs> he did the Q's Jew joint album. He asked me to come and start the album off with Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles. So I did the first wow. record with Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles and Bono. It's called Let the Good Times Roll. So I'm wow. sitting there in the studio with Quincy Jones and Rod Templeton. I'm in the middle of it. Rod Templeton is the dude that wrote the Off the Wall album for Michael Jackson. I'm sitting there in between them. They got their arms around me. I'm looking at them like this. I'm looking at him like this, and he's going, kid, this is what I want you to do. And he's telling me this stuff, and I'm standing there, I'm saying, yo, look at the money that I'm sitting in between. Just the fact that I'm in between these dudes. Right. You know, sometimes we, 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 uh, we get these looks, 
and we get these accolades, and we don't really look at how special it is because we always get an accolade, so it's like a thing we're used to. But I see and pinpoint each thing for what it is, and to sit there, to be called from Quincy Jones. First of all, yeah. first of all, yeah. Let's right. not even get to get into the right. studio. Just to be right. called, to have that in his mind, that is everything. Then to be sitting there in between them, you know. And then he asked me to come to his uh, party, his birthday party, right? Mm. I go to his birthday party. As soon as I get to the door, Oprah Winfrey is right there. She goes, oh, there goes my baby Kid Capri. My mans, I got two of my dudes with me. My man Dougie, my man RC. They looked at each other like this because they bugging. They from the block. They don't be around this stuff. So they see Oprah Winfrey saying that I was bugging because I didn't even know she knew me. Right. But she said that. So then me and her, Brandy, took a picture, hung out. Quincy took me to his case where he had 55 Grammys in a case. This is in his party. This is 55 Grammys. You, he tried to get one. Right. He got 55 in the case. And this is back then. Right. So the dude was big, very influential to me, and that's where I wanted to be. So when I did Soundtrack in the Streets, that's how I was thinking of being the Quincy Jones of hip-hop. Mm. So at what point you and Star Child stopped making tapes together? Once I stopped, once I left the S, um, anything I ever do, I didn't even want to be stuck. Right? The, t- the tapes was a stepping stone for me. When Hot 97 asked me to come and do Hot 97, I told them no, not because they wasn't the number one station, it was because they was the number one station. They didn't need me, mm. you know what I'm saying? They already had what was going on. Plus, I wanted to be in the world. This before the, and keep in mind, this before the internet. Right. So I'm doing 200 to 250 shows around the country. I wanted to touch Mississippi. I wanted to touch Florida. I wanted to touch California. I wanted to touch these people and let them see what New York was and how we could bring New York to y'all and make y'all happy and still be able to do what y'all like. In Houston, they got music that they love that nobody ever heard. Right. When, when, when you go there and you know that music, you become so much bigger. And that's what happened with me. I would go to St. Louis. I would go to these different places and make sure that the main DJ out there, yo, what's going on out here? What's popping? Okay. Cover my show, I'm gonna make sure we blow you up out there because you are the main dude in the city, so I wanna make sure we keep the light on you. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of dudes at times, the promoters will come and get get me to come do their show, and that main DJ in that city will say, Yo, I'm the hottest dude out here. Why you gotta get kicked and free? And they'll, the promoter will say, Sit there and watch him. Sit there and watch. And then that DJ will watch and see that first show. And then I come back and do another show. And he see that show and how I ripped the mud hole in this place. And now when I come back, that DJ is doing me at that show. He never talked in the microphone. Yeah. He never played records quick or the way I played it. He never played those type of records. But when I come back, that's what he's doing. Now imagine if I'm going all around the world and everywhere I go, all the DJs is doing that. Before that, they wasn't doing that. You know what I'm saying? So that was my contribute, my contribution to music. That, you know, to help the DJ move along. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was that. it was always about looking at the DJ as an artist. It was never yeah. about just me. It's never about me. Any show I do, it's never about me. It's always about the crowd. I take myself and look at look at it as if I'm in the crowd watching myself and what would make me want to come back to see me again. Right. What would make me feel good watching me again? What would make a promoter want to book me again? You know what I'm saying? And that's what makes me go so hard because it's not about me. It's never been about me. Mm. So the blow right there, kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the rumor is, right? I, I'll say his name. I was, was going to say his name. But um, like Funk Flex used to not let his the DJs that come on before him play certain records, right? Mm-hmm. And when I found out that that's somewhat of a normal thing, like if you if you're the if you're the man DJ, you tell these dudes, you know, you can't play this, this, and that. Is that is that something you ever done? Mm-hmm. And there's a reason for it. Okay. If you see technician the DJ that did the joint with the locks, mm-hmm. yeah. technician been on the road with me for twenty something years. Technician seen me rip different places down and do different things to where he became. So great because it wasn't just me; it was other DJs he watched. But he seen me on a constant basis do this right. every show. So when he did what he did with the locks, I wasn't surprised. He's supposed to, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But the reason why my shows are so have so much magnitude to it is because I want, like I said, it's not about me. I want people to feel better than they did before they got there. They can't do that. If they hear the same song three, four times a night. Mm. 
You notice how a lot of parties right now, everybody's standing around and everybody's in their phone and all that. That don't happen in my parties. Yeah, my they, parties, they're glorified jukeboxes. Right, <laughs> exactly. Because because they the continuity, it's a continuity that has to keep right. going. It has to be a beginning, the middle, and the end. You have to build people up. You see what I'm saying? And it's you against a whole room full of people that you don't even know. You just gotta, it's up to you to satisfy everybody in this room at one time. So how do you do that? You have to be the best you can be. And how do you do that is you have to tell a story. If you a DJ that comes in at 1030 at night and nobody drank nothing at 1030 at night, who wants to hear the hottest record at 1030 at night? Right. But this DJ is thinking about burning the next dude that comes out. He's thinking about himself. He's thinking about, let me get as much shine as I can. Right. Play don't those records. matter about the event. Just don't the matter. Right. It don't matter none of that. It, and that's why I brought a DJ across the country with me Everywhere who I will went. open up. Who, who will open, open up. up. I'm right. paying this dude. I'm paying for his hotel. I'm he's seeing, you know, that's bread I could keep in my pocket. But I care about my crowd so much that I'll use that bread to make sure that every show is right. Mm -hmm. You don't hear the same song in one night because we have so much music to play and the way we play it is gonna be so crazy, you, you ain't gonna miss it. But even mm -hmm. if they did play the record before you. And you played the same record, it was it, it your really person, the way that the showmanship that you had. <laughs> Those DJs didn't have it. it, it yeah, it, it really doesn't doesn't matter. Right. But it takes away an impact that I'm trying to build. Right, right, it's right. an impact that I want to keep. If you heard a song that that you wanted to hear all night, and then I come and play, it ain't gonna be the same impact. Mm -hmm. Now, same thing, vice versa. Let's say it's me opening up for you, which is very rare. But let's say that's the case. <laughs> I'm gonna stay. I'm, it's about the people. I know that you're the principal. They paying you this certain amount of money to do a certain thing and look so a certain way. So you would do way. that? You would do that for Absolutely. another Absolutely. Oh, wow. I did it before and did it many times. Like, uh. you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's what it's about. It's about knowing it's not about you. But, but who do you open up for? I want to... I mean, like I said, it's very rare that I open up for anybody uh. because I'm always headlining. Well, who, well, who? I opened up for... Uh, matter of fact, the last joint I did, the last, one, the last person I went before was Mr. C. We did a joint in Brooklyn. Okay. Okay. And with Mr. C, his name is the finisher. Right. So it's in his contract. It's not as in his contract. No, I don't have to do that. You. You know yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's, you. it's the respect. Like, right. go ahead, do your thing. That's what it is. You right. the finisher, finish it. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's right. a great DJ. On top of that, right. it ain't like he can't follow me. You know, do your thing. But I'm gonna give them hell in that building. There's a lot. That is, you know, you gotta step it up. 